Hello everyone, and welcome to another Unboxing Tomorrow Technology Side Quest in Electronics, Robotics, and Communication Systems. I've got sort of an unusual update today, something to keep me a little bit busy before I go back into Risk v and Arduino, not to mention Raspberry Pi, although I'd imagine it could help with all three. So today I've got a quick unboxing of some indium solder, which is also the first time I've ever used this material. Now, just to clarify, the solder is the metallic component that we use to attach components to the circuit board, and because of the countless electronic applications, there are actually hundreds of different possible alloys available. So, for example, we have alloys for high temperature, low temperature, high strength, shock resistance, and you can get some pretty unusual combinations. In this soldering test, I purchased one spool of indium at just about 2 meters in length, for clarification, this is indium in the pure form that we can find right on the periodic table. The name comes from its indigo line, from its spectral emissions, and there is actually a decent chance that you're watching this very video through a transparent layer of conductive ITO, or indium tin oxide. And because of these electronic displays, indium has been in high demand in recent decades. I'll probably use it mostly for special occasions. Compared to my usual alloys, which are SAC-305, and 99% tin, indium has a very low melting point, high conductivity, and it remains relatively plastic in a solid state, even at cryogenically cold temperatures. For this test, I'm using it on the breakout board, which is part of the custom drone project. Compared to 99% tin, it did melt at the lower temperature, although it was slow to wet, and it had a sort of drossy, dull appearance, which is something I didn't expect to see. Now, for transparency, I think this had more to do with possible contamination, since I was using the same tip that I used for SAC-305. This contains tin, silver, and copper, and it probably would have been more circumspect for me to entirely replace the tip before getting started. Now, fortunately, after cleaning the tip, things did improve, and the material got gradually easier to work with. And just for reference, this is an ARM processor, actually an ARM Cortex-M0+, and the IC package is a 64-pin TQFP. I would say this type of package is moderately difficult to work with, at least for hand soldering without any special equipment or preheating, although it is also fairly easy to reverse a mistake. And overall the project worked out pretty well, and after soldering with this material, I was able to get my PC to communicate with the chip, and the solder joints themselves were fairly easy to inspect. Besides the relatively high cost of indium that I mentioned earlier, indium does tend to have low bonding strength, or shear strength, and low tensile strength. In fact, its tensile strength is the lowest of all the alloys that I have stocked. And you can even feel this for yourself because when you pick up the solder wire, it feels almost like thread or cloth instead of rigid wire that you would expect. On the plus side, indium is actually a bit legendary for being able to wet difficult materials including steel, glass, and ceramic. Now, I'm not exactly sure which grades of steel it works on, but if it works at all, I'll be pretty impressed. This project is made possible thanks to TorGuard Privacy Protection Services. TorGuard VPN is the VPN that I use to reduce my exposure to malicious hackers and data collection. You can help your privacy and this channel at the same time if you use the link in the description to sign up, or use promo code UNBOXING for additional discounts. So that's it for today. Like I said, there are hundreds of possible alloys, and I tend to use different alloys for different occasions, so definitely let me know in the comments if you find this sort of thing useful, and I'll try to cover more of them. And of course, we do have the Unboxing Tomorrow Patreon page, where the monthly poll for April 2021 wants to know if you've been affected by the part shortage currently unfolding. This is also where I'm posting most of my updates on the drone project, as well as lessons learned on technical builds like this one. Stay posted for the next update in electronics, robotics, and communication systems. And as always, have a great day.